Welcome to the latest edition of the Army Talk Spotlight Series, where we highlight the companies, the people, and the technologies changing the future of retail. Ann and I are thrilled today uh, because we have a return engagement. We have a return engagement with Grabango, who we first had on the show about a year and a half ago, their CEO, Will Glazier. Still believe in our, our most listened to podcast recording ever. Ever. And I'm thrilled because today we are actually live in their store that just opened today, September 1st, with Andy Radlow, the Chief Business Officer of Grabango. Andy, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. Hi, Ann. I am doing well above average uh, on this unveiling launch of Commercial Service Day. Thank you for asking. Fantastic. So, what, so what's going on? So tell us about this store. You're standing out in front of it. looks like a window. We're live on video as well. Yeah. You're standing in front of a window. Tell we us are. about the store you're You might want to give us pan here. Uh, Annabella, our camera expert. This right here is a get-go store here in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You'll notice it has 18 islands. It's one of the busiest convenience stores in the United States of America. That's why they asked us to start here. Uh, Inside the store, it's a 3,000 square foot a store that you will see is merchandised very densely. It has relatively narrow aisles, relatively high shelves. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that without any further ado, that we go into the store. Uh, you will get a quick scan of the store so you will see um, what the Grabango system looks like or what it doesn't look like because you'll see that it blends in with the background because we have proprietary uh, enterprise class hardware that has redundant power and uh, data feeds to all of the computer vision as well as camera mo uh, 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 compute modules in our G-Rails that are colorized to blend in with the background. You'll also notice there's no turnstiles. We literally enter the store as we always have, shop as we normally do, uh, and then we produce the code in the Grabango app. We get that code scanned as we're walking out of the store and we don't wait in line for the rest of our lives. Okay, man. You just said a lot there. I cannot wait to see this. So, I mean, the big takeaways already, it's a pretty functioning store we've got here. There's a lot of, you can get gas. It's, you said, what, 18 gas, gas filling uh, spots at this store? Yeah. Yeah. It's a busy store. That's uh, uh, the high traffic store point there. Okay. Yeah. You don't have the to scan it. Store. All right. Take us through it. How's it work? How's it All work right. without so, a scan? Uh, I, uh, I'm going to demonstrate that for you because I'm going to ask you to help me shop. All right, let's do it. And this, right, I this is fun. Mask on first. Here we yeah, go. This safety is first. Action. Mask for safety. All right, here we go. All right. So first thing that you're going to notice is there are some eyeball cameras that really stand out. Okay. That's not us. That's security applications. We'll be replacing those security applications with Burbanga security applications. As you make your way in the store, and again, I do apologize, there's an active camera crew here, as well as a bunch of Burbango fans. But let's go further into the store. And uh, let me ask this gentleman to help you out. Thanks. All right. As I said, this is live action. Um, as you can see, um, the G rails uh, blend in with the lights, uh, and nobody notices them when nobody um, says that, oh gosh, what are all these cameras doing here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, why don't we uh, make our way into the store? Uh, we can pick up some savory snacks or uh, we have nuts and cookies, we have snacks, we have a all, all, uh, whole host of uh, uh, drinks in the back. Andy, I've always been um, kind of a salty guy over a savory guy. Why don't we head for some salty snacks? Yeah. Let's, let's check all right. this out. And while you're, walk, while you're walking over there, what do I have to do as a consumer? Do I need to download an app before I try this out? Uh, you know, how is the system knowing I'm in that store if I'm not having to do a scan like I would at, say, you know, a different type of operation like this? So, uh, First, uh, you can go to your Apple Store or your Google Play Store. So if you're iOS or Android, we have an app for you. Just uh, put Grabango into the search screen and voila, you will uh, get the famous Grabango app. Okay. And the button is very tastefully designed. Oh, doesn't recognize me with my mask. 
right there. <laughs> and there is your code for okay. queuing out. Here is your receipts from all of my prior shops. You can see I've uh, been doing a lot of shopping. Well, listen, yeah. um, I am kind of fond of cashews. This is a really small thing. So I'm going to grab that really quickly uh, and make sure the system is tested there. And you know what else I had today that was pretty good? Was some peanut butter crackers. This is all the way at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to grab that and pull that in uh, quickly. Uh, what about some? My yeah, what about some, Andy? Can we get some coffee? It's like right in that afternoon time right here. Is that a possibility? And you and I seem to be on a similar caffeine <laughs> cycle. I like it. I like, it. But, I like but, it. but I also like to hydrate. So let me grab a water and then Good let's idea. Get coffee. Good idea. Okay. Yeah, for those watching, that's a great point, Andy. I mean, it's like it's what it's two p.m. Central and at three p.m. Eastern over there. So yeah, it's right about yeah. time for that pickup. This is live happening in the store. Yeah. So the way our system works is based on the size of cup. Okay. Uh, that we select. So I like coffee, but I don't drink too much coffee. So why don't we go for a small cup here? Okay. And no offense, if I if you don't mind, I'm gonna pick what type if that's okay. You do it. I'm actually gonna drink this. I Is think Sumatra that's fair okay? since you're there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right, Treat yourself, some, Andy. I'm gonna go for some Sumatra here. We still will judge you, but yes, please pick whatever <laughs> it is that you'd like. Well, when you put yourself in the position I'm in right now, <laughs> you have to be okay with being judged from time to time, I think. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put that on there. Okay. And let's let's head towards let's head towards checkout. I'll put some items in my. Oh wait, the checkout's right here. What am I doing? We have two checkouts, and since there's a line, as you can see there, mm -hmm. they're quite ripe for uh, our sales experts. I bring up my app, my QR code. Then I put it on here. And you see the green lights and the positive okay. progress tone. That means that everything just transacted perfectly in a contactless way. And now, as you can see, people are looking and like, what did he just do? That's just like the Starbucks mobile pickup experience. Like that first time Excuse I me. did that. I remember that. Everyone looks at you. Yeah. Funny. They look at you. And I'll tell you an honest to goodness story that didn't make it into the press. But uh, I was just shopping uh, with Laura Correct, the CEO of, of Giant Eagle. And uh, in fact, let's go over here to the larger standing area. And what happened was uh, she badged out and there was this, I mean, really this gigantic guy that was uh, buying two beers. And uh, he watched Laura intently when she checked out and when she was, when she got her green light and progress tone, she uh, was approached by this gentleman and said, hey, 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 lady, what did you just do there? And she explained, I just used Grabango to skip the line and save time. He goes, how do I get that? Well, wait a minute, would it work with beer? And, you know, because he was holding two 40 ounces in one hand. And uh, she explained that um, on September 15th, yes, we would be supporting beer as well. And he says, I am coming back uh, to get Grabango. I mean, it was uh, right with the CEO. You just can't you know, make a more perfect situation. So yeah, that seems ideal for you guys. That seems like that works, that works pretty well. So Andy, I have a question. What if you decided that you weren't going to have those cashews? What happens then if you put them back? Or Andy, did you hear that question was, what if, and if you had those cashews and you decided you didn't want them and you put them back, what happens next? Um, ad model, what you, if, yeah, um, I said in the lab situation, you would see a pickup and a put down, but on our receipt, you'll just simply see uh, either you kept the cashews and they're on your receipt or you don't have the cashews and it's no longer on your receipt. Awesome. 
Can you show us our, can you show us your receipt now? Are we able to see a visual of that to see what oh. that coffee, what was it? Coffee, cashews, and uh, what was it? And a peanut cheese butter? And peanut butter crackers. Peanut butter crackers. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's a, I got the wrong one. It's the cheese and cheddar crackers. Nah, Ooh. those will do too. But, uh, cheese yeah, and cheddar crackers. Our receipts crackers, are coming out right now in under an hour. Um, I, I'll look right now to see. Oh, okay. The receipt. And you'll see that it is pending. So okay. the receipt is pending, and it will come out in from five minutes to forty-five minutes. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Which is typ that's typically okay. typically what we've seen before yeah. other other installations like this too. Wow. Okay. So this is uh, there's some big things going on and here, me, Andy. And let me say. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me say a couple things about that. One is is that as you were with Giant Eagle to go into commercial service. You know, I'm just gonna take this off. Uh, as we were working with Giant Eagle and GetGo to go into commercial service, um, there is a decision about our emphasis is on accuracy. Um, we also are um, implementing models to speed the process, but the emphasis is on accuracy because our belief is, is that as long as we uh, associate the accuracy with the brand, then there will be trust on a going forward basis. And of course, we'll be uh, reducing latency um, as we introduce better, faster models, um, as our event detect and our product detect get stronger and strong, stronger as we're reading in more data. Um, the constant improvement occurs every day, little bit, little bit every day, and more and more products every day. So, uh, but the real emphasis is on accuracy, and then um, we will continue uh, to decline latency down all the way down to real time. I think that makes sense too. I think Will Will Glazier, CEO, Grabango CEO, alluded to that in his uh, statement this morning too, if I remember right. Like it's almost just like the acclimation of taking an Uber or a Lyft in terms of how that all works and making sure that it's all accurate and done the correct way. So, wow. Well, let's, I, I want to ask you a few questions now that we've done the demo and people have seen how it works. This is like a live store that literally just went live this, this today. Yep. How long has this been in process? Remind everybody in terms of just the sheer rigor that it took to bring this thing to life and all that's gone into it. Yeah. Uh, well, I could go on for a long and boring time about all of that, but we announced this partnership a little over a year ago uh, in July of 2019. Um, I will say that the reason that GetGo uh, Giant Eagle is the first retrofit store to go public in the world uh, is because Laura Corrette uh, and her technology uh, and business teams uh, really seized the day, detected early that this is the trend uh, for modern retail. Uh, that in combination with their absolute dedication to having the best shopper experience uh, made them decisive, quite frankly. And they signed with us early and we started working together early the other advantage um, that brought them uh, to first place, quite frankly, uh, is because their technology team uh, is the master of their own point of sale system. And mm. they do all of their own programming on their uh, point of sale system. And they were able to integrate us um, more quickly than some other uh, operations that may depend on third party uh, developers for their point of sale system, for example. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of many factors that I made Giant Eagle get go first in the world. And you guys are, I mean, that's the other thing too. There's been a, I, the, one thing that drives Ann and I crazy, like there's been a lot of talk in the industry about all the different things companies are doing. You guys are actually now doing it. And that retrofit part is a key piece of this too. Like talk more about that in terms of what, what does that all really mean for those that are watching this and listening in terms of how you were able to put this into a working operation and actually do versus just, theorize and talk about how it's going to work. Yeah, Chris, I really appreciate your bringing that up. You know, there's been years of promises of deploying a retrofit store. And what I mean by a retrofit store is an existing store, um, not a store built inside of a store, not a part of a store, but the entire store. Existing customer base, the existing merchandise, shelves in the exact same place as the day we first set foot here. Uh, and uh, with a technology that is computer vision only, lightweight, that can be installed without 
uh, interrupting a single sale that took place um, in the store. Yeah, you guys so didn't have all to close those the stores at all, right? That's right. Yeah, we were able, because the technology is very lightweight, it's like a light fixture. And okay. so we're able to work around um, in late night window. This happens to be a 24 hour store, but we were still during the light traffic periods able to deploy the system in a matter of days uh, and initiate the training process in which the system then reads in uh, and uh, becomes you know, technically familiar uh, and understanding not only the store uh, geography, uh, but the products within the store and the association of humans um, selecting items within that store. And Andy, that means, one point I want to pull out of that too, right, if I'm hearing you right, that means you guys have the redundancy to a level and the confidence intervals that this is working to a level after a pretty significant period of time of watching this in this store and how it plays out. You're not having to change fixtures or anything as well, right? There's, it's all a camera-based system. There's no sensor fusion in the, in, the, in the fixturing. None of that's not required here in terms of how you guys are doing this. Is that right? We wouldn't have Giant Eagle as a client if we were sensor fusion. This is a very, very dynamic store. Uh, and if Laura Kretz even seeing this, she'll remember during the early part of our relationship, I used to say that stores were chaotic. Mm -hmm. And she um, asked me politely to never say that again about her stores. Her stores are not chaotic, they're dynamic. Uh, and <laughs> as, is, as is all retail. <laughs> and, and, as is all retail. You know very well, given uh, your time at Target uh, and all of the people that you work with today, you and Anne. So it's, uh, uh, it's a very dynamic environment uh, and sensor fusion, you know, implies that you're going to have to reprogram the shelves every time you want to change merchandising. Uh, if you have um, what's in the industry called MOOP, uh, matter out of place, um, if somebody picks up uh, that, those cheese crackers that Ann was talking about and I put them back in a different place, if somebody else picked that up, they're not going to get charged for it because the system has no earthly idea what that is. But with a computer vision system only, like Rubango's, especially one that has fault tolerance and enterprise class design, you can reliably uh, expect the system to be up. And no matter where you put those cheese crackers, uh, when somebody comes and picks those up, puts them on their person or in their basket, et cetera, and, uh, and scans out, then they're going to be charged for that product. And Andy, is that true also of like, say there's like a, where it's the holidays and we're doing a holiday version of one of the candies that are available in the Giant Eagle store or holiday version of Coca-Cola. Um, is that something that the stores have to do any sort of new operational thing to allow for or as they're bringing in new products or how does that work? So you're bringing up a great point is that sometimes products change without any action on the part of the store themselves. Right. Uh, and that's why it's a failed strategy to pass all new products that come into the store through some sort of acquisition process or recognition process or training process, because there are so many people that are stocking shelves in grocery and C stores today. So no, what happens is when a new product gets introduced, uh, then the system alerts uh, because the confidence level of recognizing that product is diminished or below a threshold. So if you have, uh, let's say, holiday Coke, I know everybody talks about that with the polar bear or what have you, but <laughs> I don't have a better example. Uh, yeah, when you have Christmas Coke come on, uh, and let's say that they changed the polar bear, maybe they moved it to a reindeer. Uh, if it's a material enough change, and the accuracy uh, of the algorithm goes below threshold, then an alert will, um, will be sounded humans will be served up in an automated fashion, the most relevant video clip. That, that means the system determines where the maximum exposure of the product is that uh, triggered the alert, that's served up to a human, and the human then is asked, is this Coke? We think it's Coke, but we're below threshold. And the human can update the system and say, that is Coke, but it's Christmas Coke. Here's the proper skew for that, for inventory and perhaps even pricing purposes. And then from that point forward, we, sh we network that out to all of the stores that are in the chain. Mm -hmm. uh, and we start the learning algorithms to make sure that we recognize above threshold um, as quickly as possible. 
the system the system gets smarter that makes sense yeah it's an automated yeah. exception based management system almost which i gotta imagine in the yeah. convenience store industry i've had a lot of people tell me too like the hard challenge there is that like you've got vendors coming in they're putting up different pop and different displays for beer and you know fourth of july and all kinds of stuff but it sounds like that same process would work in terms of how those types of dynamics happen in a convenience store as well there's 30 patents uh, registered at Grabango that gives us broad uh, intellectual property ownership in the category, but that's for software, uh, for hardware, and also for process. And that process of recognizing and rapidly integrating new inventory um, into our systems awareness um, is uniquely Grabango. Which I, which I think is important to hit on, and maybe we end there, which is and the way you do that is you learn by doing. And you guys have been doing it since you first announced this about a year ago, like you said. And now you're live, really the first retrofitted store that, or you know, at this scale in terms of what we're seeing in the marketplace. Uh, and that will only continue to get better. So, well, hey, Andy, thank you so much for uh, letting us go on that tour with you today. Did, is the receipt there, just out of curiosity? Is it showing uh, up yet? You know what? I, let me look. The answer is your receipt is still being purchased. Uh, still uh, being purchased. Okay. I thought but I'd give I, it a shot. You know as soon as it comes out, I'll send it to both of you guys. That'd be awesome. Uh, so awesome. Let's see if we got all four items there. Put it in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, man, again, thank you so much. On behalf of Ann, Andy Radlow, Chief Business Officer at Grabango, giving us a tour of their live installation with Giant Eagle. As always, as we sign off here, especially now more than ever with Andy wearing a mask throughout this entire, most of this interview, be careful out there.